In this video, we are going to be doing an overview of another mech which is often overlooked or even criticized. I, however, take on the opinion that this is one of the best hidden gems in the 3025 setting and beyond. A medium mech with indirect long-range fire at its core, but also a defensive weapons package for up-close and personal fighting, this battle mech is perhaps the unappreciated warrior of House Davian, being seen in many battles, but never truly admired. Without further delay, let us begin to illuminate the masses with the brilliance of Aknar Battle Mechs, Dervish. A medium mech weighing in at 55 tons, the Dervish is at the top of the weight bracket for what is classified as a medium mech. A venerable design from the 26th century, the Dervish has served in the Inner Sphere for over 600 years as of the Ill Clan era, and was commissioned by the Star League and mostly fought under the banner of the SLDF until the collapse of the interstellar organization itself. Barely changed from the time of its inception, barring swapping out an old, underpowered engine, this battle mech was an echo of a time of the earliest major conflicts of the Inner Sphere, though remained in service due to how well this machine of war held up despite the passage of time. Though it was plentiful enough that most dervishes ended up in almost every successor state, the main one who broadly adopted it, utilized it, manufactured it, and appreciated it were the Federated Sons. Often called a poor man's archer, this realistically couldn't be further from the truth, as the dervish is a mobile platform in ways that the archer could never hope to be, being able to negotiate its way through difficult or even dangerous terrain in order to make its appearance on the battlefield. What makes this mech so valuable is its ability to be where it needs to be. It can always be on hand, helping either heavies or even lights. No archer, no archer ever got up the side of a mountain to lend support to a recon unit, at least not in time to actually help them. The DV-6M is the main variant of the Dervish to see production and use during the Star League and Succession Wars. Powered by a 275 core standard engine weighing in at 15.5 tons, which gives it a maximum speed of 86.4 km per hour or 8 movement points in the tabletop game. In addition to this, the Dervish has a great jump ability of being able to leap up to 150 meters, giving it exceptional ability to handle rough terrain, as well as to overcome other heavier obstacles, or to keep it safe from other mechs. In terms of raw speed, the Dervish is very well served by its engine, and can keep up with most formations. With it also being paired with jump jets, this allows it to support almost any force. In terms of cooling, the DV-6M unfortunately is underserved by 10 standard heatsinks. Between its jump jets and other systems, this increases the chance the Dervish will unfortunately run hot unless carefully managed by its mech warrior. The real strength of the Dervish, beyond its exceptional mobility given the kind of battle mech roles it fills, is of course its offensive capabilities. Slightly less armed at long range than its primary competitor, the TBT-5N, the Dervish comes with twin federated 10-shot LRM missile systems with 10 tubes each. Interestingly, in lore, its missile systems are considered more protected than that of the archers, at least on the surface, from being embedded deeper inside the mech's torso. Backing up these two LRM launchers is four close-range systems. To start, it has two federated two-shot SRM missile systems, or SRM-2s, which give it a scattershot ability in close to try to score critical hits or lucky hits to the head, or TACs. Further backing this up are its more reliable damage dealers in close, which are a pair of Chiscomp 39 medium lasers, letting it deliver five damage chunks out of enemy targets that get too close. Though this combination of weapons is better at warding off damaged mediums and lights that break through and get inside its LRM threat range. This combination of weapons gives it a decent long-range fire ability to provide support to allied forces, as well as having decent in-close weapons to try to defend itself or go on the attack against enemy forces. Most importantly, it does have a longer rate of fire than many of its counterparts, as the LRM-10s are less ammunition hungry than LRM-15 or LRM-20s. It has 12 rounds of fire per launcher, as opposed to 8 from both the Trebuchet and the Catapult series. 
Finally, for protection, the DV-6M is underserved by 7.5 tons of standard armor. As the unit is 55 tons, it edges, in my opinion, into being ever so slightly underprotected, which is the trade-off that it takes in order to have the mobility and firepower that it has. Much like the TBT, it's not meant to be up close and personal during much of the fighting until the later stages of the skirmish or battle. The DVD-6M is an impressive machine because of its mobility and maneuverability for its weight. Being able to be in the right place at the right time, regardless of terrain, gives it an edge over many of its competitor designs. While yes, as mentioned prior, it's not as armed as an archer, it fundamentally isn't meant to be, as it's 15 tons lighter, is faster, is a faster mech, and has jump jets in order to help it get through major barriers that might prevent its arrival on the field of battle in time, or negotiate its way out of trouble. While it may be outgunned by its smaller rival, the Trebuchet, it just might outfight it in close, even without the advantages of jump jets. This mech is popular with House Davian for a reason, because they implement it with the right units and in the right circumstances and see the power it can bring to the field for them. The Dervish, sadly, is poorly served by a limited number of variants. I will be covering three of them here, but this actually makes up a significant portion of the current roster. The DV-6MD is a Star League era upgrade package for the Dervish. It would install an XL engine, 12 overall double heat sinks, and upgrade the LRM-10 packages to LRM-15s. This version is essentially the DV-6M, but with significantly more firepower and cooling. The main problem with this, as with most XL versions, is an XL engine creates fragility for the mech in that if it loses one torso, it leads to the failure of the battle mech itself. This is not always a bad trade-off, however, and in a mech like the Dervish, it definitely yields benefits, but it does mean it must be managed with more care to keep it out of the line of fire. Just prior to the clan invasion, the Federated Commonwealth would begin the process of producing the upgraded variant of the DV-6M of their own, the DV-7D using Star League era technology. It would take on the biggest advantage it could by updating its heat sinks to double heat sinks, as well as upgrading its internal structure to endo steel. Cases would be added for its ammunition stores and it would upgrade to streak SRM2s. Finally, it improved its defenses with new ferro fibrous armor, making it harder to destroy, all while keeping its standard engine for enhanced durability. This is one of the better upgrades from the original batch of variants developed from the Hell Memory Core and its technology. Essentially, the same machine, but functionally better in almost every respect, save for raw firepower. The final version we'll be talking about today is the DV-8D, created in 3062. It installs an XL engine as its main deviation from the 7D, it has slightly more armor, and has LRM-15 launchers with Artemis control systems as well as four ER medium lasers. Often overlooked even by designers inside the Federated Suns, the Dervish plays a vital role for support and does its stated job well. It has the ability to support mech assets almost anywhere, in most environments, regardless of its configuration. It's always there, always on time, and much like a worker who never makes any fuss is often forgotten and left to languish as the reliable, studious individual it is. Maneuvering and speed are essential in warfare, and in tabletop games, and is often overlooked in favor of bigger, scarier guns and weapons. The Dervish is well armed for its speed and jumping ability. It makes compromises where it has to, to achieve what the design is meant for, and it can work with lights, mediums, and even heavies. This machine, no. This warrior of House Davian deserves far more credit and attention than it has been delivered. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. There is a YouTube member program to support this channel as well, and I appreciate the support from members immensely. With that, I will catch all of you in the comments section below.